Pretty amazing. Huh? You don't look at all like you've been up all night traveling. <laughs> you don't look so bad yourself. This is incredible. You like what you see so far? Mountains I've ever seen in my life. I haven't seen many mountains tonight either. <laughs> what is this, Colorado? Nope. I know what? Negative. <laughs> what is this? It's ours. machine will go here, and along this wall we will have shelves from the floor to the ceiling filled with every kind of coffee. I mean, Colombian, Hawaiian, vanilla nut bean. Mm -hmm. Ryan. Mm -hmm. Hello. Look, yeah, it's fine. Look, whatever you say. Well, how do you know you barely even glanced at the drawing? Well, look who's talking. You haven't even been able to look me in the face since I walked in here. Come on, Brad, are you actually going to stand there and act as if nothing happened last night? All right, all right. Which do you want to talk about, Ryan? Kissing me or throwing your drink in my face? Oh, you doused me first. I was only trying to bring you back to your senses. But, you know, considering the circumstances, you know, I probably should have cut you some slack. I mean, you know, I mean, you're bound to come a little unglued watching Vicky marry your brother. So, do you think that's what my problem is? I am incredibly relieved that that wedding is over. You are so I mean, today, I'm happier today than I've been in, in months. Right. Or at least I would be if it, if it wasn't for people like you making idiotic statements about things that they know nothing about. Well, this is a switch. I expected to see Sloan draped all over you, telling you what a genius you are. Oh, she's still in a snit. Because there were no explosions at the wedding? Gee, she what a shame. She would have preferred a little real-life drama. <sighs> You're slipping, McKinnon. I figured you'd have these things patched up already. Oh, come on, Paulina. Don't lose faith in me. I'm on to something here, okay? Yeah? Did you see something on the tape? I don't know. You know, Jake, last night you were hinting around that you knew who was after Grant and Vicky. I said I had an idea. Yeah, but you never told me how you came up with this brainstorm. It was something Ryan said when he was trying to punch my lights out. I'm listening. He said you're in on it, too, aren't you, Jake? You're working for Spencer. That's it? Well, that's pretty weird, don't you think? Oh, get real, Jake. Do you actually think that Spencer would make death threats against his own son? I am not saying that. What? Exactly. Fine, what exactly are you saying? I am saying that Spencer is in this up to his ears, and we are going to find out how. We? Oh, come on, Cupcake, you know I don't make a move without you. You really have a gift with tea leaves, Mary Frances. I left more in the kitchen. Thank you. They replaced English breakfast as my favorite. Your breathing is still very shallow, Douglas. Oh, it'll pass. I feel much better now that you're here. But I'm surprised that you are. I mean, what with your waiting just a few days away. There's not that much for me to do. Christy and Felicia have handled everything from invitations to flowers. So it's going all very smoothly. Well... We've hit a few bumpy spots, but I try not to dwell on the complications. I'm afraid I'm, I'm one of those. Douglas, of course you aren't. What with my heart acting up, I've needed Christy more than usual these days. It's been upsetting for her. You're terribly worried about her, aren't you? She's panicking. She insists on me looking at more tests, reconsidering a heart transplant. I don't want machines keeping me alive. I wish Christy would understand that. She doesn't want to let go. It's been very difficult. We've argued. I'm so sorry. Maybe if you would try talking to her again. I wish I could, Douglas, but I'm afraid that would just make matters worse. Christy thinks I've taken sides with you, that I'm encouraging you to give in. Maybe that's why you came to town. You think that she'd listen to him? If she'd listen to anybody, it would be Kath. Kath, I need your advice before it's too late. You said this was about us, you and me. 
Douglas is failing right before my eyes. Is he in the hospital again? No, not yet, but I'm sitting on a time bomb, you know that. Is there anything I can do? Tell me that there's a way out of this living world that you drew up for him. I'm not sure I understand. Do I have to do everything he says? Well, mostly it tells you what not to do. I mean, is it legally binding? Do I have to sit back and watch my husband die? Look, Douglas doesn't want any extraordinary means used to keep him alive if, and this is the important part, mm -hmm. if there's no reasonable expectation of recovery. Well, who determines that? The doctor? Douglas? Me? Well, Douglas, as long as he's able, and then it would be you. So I can, ostensibly, tell the doctors to keep fighting for his life. I can, I can tell them to, to, to use all the machines that they have. Yes, but this Douglas doesn't want this. Yes, I know that, but if I do it, am I breaking the law? Christy, I think this, this is something you should talk to Douglas about, not me. Yes, I can't talk to Douglas about this. He's obviously not in his right mind. Otherwise, he wouldn't be asking me to do this. I need your help, Dad. You're the only person. Why did we have the driver stop here? Because I wanted you to see where we're staying. Oh, no. Please, God. Please, God. I hope you don't think that I was interested in some kind of roughing it vacation or some kind of a camping out sort of roughing it vacation, because I really am... Don't you think I know you better than that by now? It's a castle. It's the most beautiful castle I've ever seen in my life. Shall we, Mrs. Harrison? Is this where we're Doesn't Christy confide in you anymore? She tells me bits of things. But it's not like when we were growing up and reading each other's journals. Christy felt we were much too sophisticated to call them diaries. You miss all that, don't you? Sure. I figured we would just be able to pick right up where we left off and that we would be bearing our souls and laughing at who we turned out to be. That's the kind of friends we were. Has Christy changed a lot? I didn't think so at first, but... Now you do. Well, maybe it's me. I'm not the same either. Christy says you're just as she remembers you. Does she? I've tried to figure it out, Douglas. I, I keep telling myself that we just grew in different directions. I believe you when you say you've grown. I wonder if Christy feels she has. Does it even enter her head? That's what I mean. Douglas, when Christy was 15 years old, she acted like she was 30. And I always looked up to her because she seemed so much older and wiser. But you don't see her that way anymore, do you? What's important is that she still sees herself that way. And why not? She's led a much more sophisticated life. She's lived in New York, worked in the theater. That doesn't make so much sense. What does she think about your interest in spiritual matters? Not much. She makes a joke out of it. She's not the first. But she's your best friend. It has to hurt a lot. Actually, it's totally like Christy. She would never pretend with me about something like that. 
What about other things? Because nothing is simple with Christy anymore. I used to be able to figure out why she did things, and now I don't have a clue. I've been wondering if maybe it's because she resents our friendship. I think it's more likely she resents what you have with Cass. You're serious, aren't you? You and Cass are young. You have a wonderful life and children ahead of you. I can't give her that. Douglas. If you gave Christy what she needed, or she wouldn't have married you. But look at me, Mary Frances. Out of all of us, I've changed the most. Cass, you don't know Douglas. When we got married, he promised that he'd never leave me, and now he's asking me to shove him off into the great beyond. Oh, he's not asking for that. Yes, he is. He's just asking nicely. That's his style. The instructions that he left in his living will are designed to help keep his final days dignified. To save you from watching him linger in a state where you two can't reach out to each other. Well, that's what he says, but there's more to it than that. What more can there be? He wants to die. I mean, I actually think he's looking forward to it. Honey, I know this is difficult for you, but Douglas accepts the inevitable, and we have to try to do that, too. He accepts too much. He used to fight every weakness and every setback, and now he just lets it all wash right over him. Maybe it seems that way to you. It is that way. That's why I have to fight for him and protect him. From what? Himself? That's what married people do for each other. They support each other. Oh, yeah, but this is wrong, I guess. Christy, Douglas is very clear about how he wants to die. He's all I have. <laughs> oh. Well, I know that. Oh. I know. You're going to have to say goodbye someday. I won't be able to do that. I won't be able to do that, Cass. Vicky. Would you just shut up about her, okay? Please, Brett? Fine, fine. Look, are you ready to look at these drawings, or am I going to have to keep yeah, talking to yeah, myself? Yeah. Look, you don't have to grab them. You can stop picking on me. Sure, when you stop being so grouchy. Well, if you stop talking about my personal life, maybe I'll, just maybe, I'll have a shot at a good mood. Oh, you have good moods. All right, all right, this is nuts. This is not, we can't even be in the same room together without fighting with each other. Now, how are we going to work together? You know, I'm not the one who's having a problem with this. No. You're having a problem with the fact that I showed some real interest in you last night. Oh, I see. That's what you call planting a great big one on me, huh? You kissed me back. Just for a second. I mean, you know, I, until I realized that it had nothing to do with me that you were on the rebound. Oh, oh, I hear another psychology lesson coming on. You know, maybe that's your true calling in life. At least I try to understand people, which is a hell of a lot more than I can say for you. You know, Britt, you're out in left field when it comes to me. You're a man. How much more is there that I need to know? Mm-hmm. You know, this is, the, this is the whole reason why I didn't want to get mixed up with you in the first place. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing with those? I have to finalize those Hi, plans. Well. Hi. Hi. Am I interrupting? No. No. All right, this may not be a good time, but I was just wondering how the plans for your espresso bar were coming along. I don't know. Why didn't you ask her? She's designing them. Why don't you ask Ryan? He's financing it. Jenna was telling everyone at KBAY what a new hip happening place that you guys are opening up. No, we're a long way away from opening anything, Paulina. Right now, all we've got is space. And the design. Mm -hmm. You know, this would fit into a great new segment we're doing on new alternatives to old-fashioned beer joints. Oh, I see. So you rushed right over here to get us on film, even though we don't really even exist yet. Well, sure, I wanted to get a jump on it. It seemed like a good so idea. So what's going on, Paulina? Was this your idea or Jake's? You know how it is, Alice. You try to get everything you can on tape, but you just miss a couple things. So I'll get some pickup shots here, and I'll mix it in with the footage I already have at the reception. Excuse me, but won't it look rather odd without the guests? Because there were so many people at the wedding. 
That's all you can see on the tape. <clears throat> if you say so, sir. You take off now. Mr. Harrison said it was okay if I poke around. That's very unusual, sir. Well, Mr. Harrison's got nothing to hide, right? What you're looking for? Now, what do you say they call this place? Banff. Two Fs. Canadian Rockies. Wildly romantic. Utterly private. And ours. For as long as you want it. <coughs> oh, Jim. Could you put those in the lobby, please? <laughs> Is he all right? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Maybe I went a little overboard. Thanks, Jim. But since I wanted this to be a surprise, I told Jacqueline to send everything you'd love to wear for every occasion. You spoil me, Senator. Oh, I have not yet begun to spoil. Shall we? Race, yeah. <laughs> So, why are you really here, Paulina? Brett, could you excuse us for a minute, please? Sure, I was just about to take oh, off. Brett, um, look, we better finalize those plans if we're gonna get any publicity from these TV crews, hmm? Sure, we'll be back in half an hour. Thank you. She didn't have to do that. So, Paulina, tell me, what does Jake want? I was just tidying up, Mr. Harrison. I, I didn't think you'd want these papers in the shot. How thoughtful. Well, that's me thinking all the time. I told you, Jake figured we could do some shots of your espresso bar. Oh, yeah, and he wants to give me some free press because he had such a wonderful time going a few rounds with me before the wedding yesterday. Jake loves a good story. You're a lousy liar, Paulina. Okay, fine, Ryan. What's your beef with Jake? My beef with him is that he sends his girlfriend to do his own business. Snooping around here when he should be doing it himself. So, Alistair tells me you didn't get all you needed yesterday. No, actually I need a, a couple of establishing shots. I was just getting ready to set up my tripod. That's all right, Jake. I'm glad you're here. We need to talk. We do. Yes, I'm very curious. At the wedding, you implied that you might know who was plaguing Vicky and Grant no, no, with these no, threats. What I said was that I didn't believe that everyone on the outside was a fed. I mean, whoever's targeting Grant is definitely not some two-bit gangster with an axe to grind. Do you believe the police are hiding something? Well, they say they nabbed the maniac, but they haven't released a name and there's nothing in the papers. Now, that's because Grant wants this to die out as soon as possible. Jake, these sick people get an awful lot of satisfaction from publicity. Anyway, it's over. How can you be so sure? Grant's anti-crime bill hasn't even been voted on yet. Who's to say this creep does not have a friend? Jake said that when you were fired up that you said something about Spencer having hired him. It's a family matter, Pauline. Can you drop it? Ryan, whatever it was, had you two breaking crystal. Now, Jake gets in a lot of fights, but you don't. Drop it, Paulina. Please, okay? Jake was right. You were covering something. You're in the loop. You have any idea who this maniac is? No, Jake, it's classified. They haven't even told Grant who it was. Well, that fits. Oh, you seem to have your own theory about these threats, Jake. Kind of. You see, I figure whoever they fingered must be some high up mucky muck. That's why they're keeping all this business hush hush. That kind of makes sense, don't you think? Well, uh, there is a certain logic to it, I right. suppose. So all we have to do is find out who this bigwig is. The police know what they do by burying this. Stay out of it, Jake. What are you kidding? This is a major story, Mr. The Harrison. The story has come to an end, Jake. Now, I think you'd better pack up your things, and uh, I'm sure you'll have plenty. You're right, and the footage I've got is exceptional, if I do say so myself. There is one thing I can't get out of my mind, though. What's that? Well, I 
I just remembered what Ryan told me as he was pounding the stuffing out of me. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, you're in on it, Jake. You're working for Spencer, aren't you? Now, what do you suppose he meant by that? Here you go. Some good old-fashioned H2O. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry I lost it like that. Please, don't apologize. I'm not a big fan of brave fronts. I've just been keeping so much inside. It finds its way out sooner or later. Anyway, thank you for listening. I didn't mean to make this your problem. It's tough being strong for someone else, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. How much longer do you think you can keep this up? As long as I have to. Douglas has found a certain peace inside himself, and I don't want to destroy that for him. Why don't you ever talk to Frankie about this? <laughs> I can't talk to Frankie about that afterlife mumbo-jumbo. I, I don't believe in it. And I know it's selfish, but I want Douglas here with me. Yeah, I understand completely. See, I knew you would. So I guess there's only one other thing for me to suggest to you, and that's to... Talk to a professional. A therapist. Yeah, why not? I mean, there are lots of counselors who specialize in working with terminally ill and their families. Yeah, but when that's good for them, but I couldn't possibly open up to a total stranger. You've had a lot of experience dealing with all the things that you're feeling. Well, I'll think about it, okay? In the meantime, it's just been an enormous relief talking to you. I'm here any time. Thank you. Excuse me. Just may take you up on that. <laughs> Hello? Hi, baby, it's me. Where are you, Frankie? I stopped by to see Douglas. He's offered to take a look at my ethics paper. How's he doing? Well, tell him I said hello. Frankie's visiting Douglas. Well, they've really taken to each other, haven't they? Cass says hi. Tell him I won't keep his future wife much longer. Will you be able to stick around a little longer so that we can have lunch together when I get home? Well, why don't I make it for you? How's that? I love you. How's that? That's what I wanted to hear. Any wedding jitters yet? No way. Don't you worry about that either, because Christy's right here keeping me in line. She is? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. Well, I better go. Oh, no, stay for lunch. Frankie's looking forward to it. No, I really can't. Oh, you're that afraid of my cooking, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's... Oh, well, why pretend? I, I just can't leave Douglas alone any longer. He's not alone. Frankie's there. <sighs> well, not for much longer. Um, th there's another reason why I, I can't really open up to Douglas right now. What is it? He's, he's gotten irrational about things. He, when I go out, he forgets things. He gets confused, forgets where he puts things. Oh, that happens to me all the time. No, Cass, this is serious. He has conversations with people who aren't in the room. You said that you thought that his illness was affecting his mind? Yeah. And he's so proud. I, I feel like I'm betraying him just by telling you this. Oh, God. You're dealing with an awful lot, aren't you? I'm surprised you don't float away the way you drink this uh, stuff. Did I hear you say someone was with Kat? <sighs> Christy stopped by to see him. She's there now with Kat alone. I had hired you. For what? Well, it beats me. He was, uh, he was too upset to get to that part. Ah, he must have been talking about the tape of the wedding. My helping you out with those expenses. <laughs> I don't think so. Ryan knew I was working for KBAY, and, uh, that wasn't exactly his tone. Well, I brought on so many security people, maybe he thought 
you were working undercover. Then why would he punch me in the face? No, he was upset with me. More to the point, he was upset with you. Unfortunately, that's nothing new. <laughs> Ryan and I have always had a stormy relationship. Well, I have my theory on that, too. Which is? I'm going to include it in my special wedding video. I don't see how my relationship with Ryan has anything to do with your story on Grant's wedding. You see, my, my producer goes in big time for the family entry. Now, picture this, two brothers in love with the same woman. No, wait a minute. You're not including that. I'm going to include everything. Jake? Don't worry, it's all cleaned up. My audience is going to love the nutcase trying to stop the wedding who was caught in the nick of time. The authorities know who it is but won't release his name. The Secret Service won't take kindly to your nosing into their case. Then I'll watch my back. Thank you for the advice. What's wrong? Does it bother you that Christie's at my house? No, I was just surprised. Uh, she left here so upset. I, I didn't think she'd turn to Cass. She's shutting down with you, too. I'm afraid my illness has been a terrible strain on her. She's been very restless lately. She's isolating herself just when she needs the support. I don't understand it. She's become such a loner. Oh, yes, I suppose it was inevitable that she'd change. She's been through so much. See, that's the other thing I don't understand. What has she been through? You hear Christy tell it. She had a wonderful career, met the man of her dreams, got married. It doesn't get more perfect than that for well, most people. It isn't all that rosy. She's left out a few parts. My illness was uh, something that neither of us bargained for. Did she miss her career? I think uh, she misses the person she might have become. You know, with a lot of people, I can sense their pain, where it's coming from. Like you did with me. Yes, but with some people, it's the pain they feel emotionally. But with Christy, I can't connect at all. I try, and all I get is static and confusion. Really, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> this is the presidential suite, Mr. Harrison. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I open the curtains? No, uh, no, no. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, thank you, sir. I hope you enjoy your stay in band. Oh, we will, I assure you. What's going on? Don't you trust that guy? Hey, I thought we were going to leave all our paranoia behind us oh, in Bay City. Oh, we are, we are. I just wanted us to be alone when I did. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> oh, so romantic. You can still say that after we spent our wedding night on an airplane? I sure can. What do you think of the room, Mrs. Harris? <sighs> oh. I loved it when the guy downstairs called me Mrs. Harris. Oh, well, I'm so glad. The view isn't half bad either, is it? I feel like we're in the clouds. We are. I have been ever since you said yes. You know what the really good part is? Tell me, please. There's no guy outside our door talking into his lapel. You sure you won't be lonesome? Ha <laughs> ha! No cameramen, no reporters. I've made certain of that. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I felt so free. I'm sorry. I'll never... Forget what you've done for me these no, past few no. weeks. It's over. I don't ever want to think about it again. It's a deal. No one's going to be looking over our shoulders. That's why I chose this place. You chose so beautifully. I think this is the most perfect place on earth. It's the way we start our life together, Mrs. Harris. Mm. Tell me. Is it no, one? no, no, Grant. I, huh? I don't think there's anything you can do about it. It's... You sure? Big. <laughs> no, no, try me, please. Uh, uh, please. 
It's this mountain right here. It's a little bit too far to the right. Do you think you could have it moved over what, to the left? This mountain right here? Yes. This mountain? This mountain? Yes. <laughs> Did I marry a wise guy or what? Maybe. Marrying you is the wisest thing I ever did. How long have you been standing there, Christine? Oh, do you really care? Of course we do. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I would have said something a little sooner, but I didn't want to interrupt. I was learning so much. Oh, Christy, please. How would you like if I spoke to your husband like that, Mary Frances? Would you like it? Christina. You better go. I'd like to explain. Well, first let me deal with the fact that you don't like the person I've become. I never said that, Christy. I'd better talk to Christy alone. I'll go. Oh, yeah, now that Douglas tells you. I never meant to hurt you, Christy. And I'm very clear about who Douglas loves. I just wish you were. I'll let myself out. Goodbye, Douglas. Goodbye, Mary Frances. Could you have been more rude? Don't you stand there accusing me! You're trying to turn my best friend against me! Frankie's concerned about you. I don't want her pity. Her feelings for you are genuine. She's concerned about your happiness. Can you say the same thing about your feelings for her? Oh, so she's the one you care about now. You aren't doing anything about your attraction to Cass, are you? Are you? You can tell Jake that I'm not going to be bought off by some feature on KBAY. Listen, okay? I was serious about doing some footage I'm serious on too, box. Paulina. Am I back too soon? Oh, no, I'd say your time was perfect. So long, Ryan. Paulina. Oh, what Spencer. a surprise. Huh? Yeah. Paulina was just doing, um, doing some groundwork for KBAY. Oh. That station keeps you and Jake very busy, doesn't it, Paulina? You bet, Spence. They really cracked the whip over mm -hmm. there. Listen, uh, I'd love to sit and chat, but my lunch break is over. Jeff. What about you, Ryan? Are you free for lunch? With you? Not in this lifetime. Ryan, please. Look, Dad, forget it. I need to talk to you alone. Dad, can't you see that Brett and I are doing some work together here? And Brett, I'm sorry, but this is urgent. Oh, I can leave again. No, you can't. Well, I, I just remember that when I left before, I forgot something. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Okay, what was it? Earplugs. Look, oh, Brett, please, come on. Can't you just, just lay low for a little while, please? Would you rather that I just put my desk out in the Brett, hall? Brett, please, just hang out. Okay, okay. I, I work better under pressure anyway. Great. You're about to get your privacy back. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Just give me a second. Brett, uh, come. Bye. Uh, now I'm really going to lose you it. You don't know how angry I am right now, Dad. Now, do I have to spell it out for you again? Do not come by here. Do not call me. Ryan. Jake. McKinnon just paid me a visit. So, you're not completely without friends in this world, Now, now, listen to me. That little remark that you tossed off is going to cause all of us a lot of trouble. Oh, my. Victoria, um, I... I... I thought you were starving. I am sorry, but I won't feel good until I put this picture of Stephen. <laughs> ah. <laughs> right here. It's perfect. What, uh, what else do you have in that case? Nothing. Oh, let me see. No, no. It's private. Private from your husband? Really? Let's just have a look, shall we? Oh, my. This is interesting. Hmm. So is this. Hmm. Oh. I like this. You're supposed to see it on me. You really think that I would let Jacqueline put flannel pajamas in your trousseau? Well, these are just a few things that I... Got his gifts at my shower. I just couldn't bear to see them go to waste. I'm not worried. Maybe I should model them for you right now. Well, you do that and all bets are off. What does that mean? I know I said that I'd restrain myself, but this is pushing my restraint to the max. Oh, and it isn't mine? Come on, we, uh, 
We didn't come all this way just to jump in the sack, did we? I'm going to show you that getting there is half the fun. What did you have in mind? I'm going to make you hopelessly and madly in love with me. Are you ready? Try me. Okay, follow me. We're going to get changed. This way. Okay. Wait. I'm sure you probably meant this way. No, I mean this way. <laughs> Ryan, Grant can't find out that I was trying to stop the wedding. If he does, it'll finish us for good. Is that the first time you thought of that? Boy, you really are a piece of work, you know? Can't you talk to Jake? Convince him that he's off base. That no. He misunderstood what you said. No. I did this for you. Oh, come as on. well as for Grant. The only thing you, you did was underestimate all of us again. Did you really think Vicky was, that she was just going to walk away from Grant while somebody was pointing a gun to his head? Let's get the hell out of here. Dad, I'm working here. Or are you going to try and screw that up for me, too? stick to buildings and blueprints, I'll be fine. Well, don't worry. I wasn't even about to ask about that. Good. You don't. So, you told Mary Frances that I was after her fiancé? You know, I would never do that. No, I really don't know that, Douglas. I don't know what you do anymore at all. After all, there would be another way to control me. Oh, that's not fair. I'm not your enemy. Oh, but you are my keeper. This has to stop. Yes. Yes, it does. You shouldn't be telling me who I can see and who I can't see anymore. In a few days, Cass will be marrying a best friend. You know, ever since you met me, you've been telling me what to do, how high to jump. Christina, look at me. And I've been very good. I've played my part very well, I think. Look, don't hurt yourself and your friend just because you are angry with me. Would you please stop telling me what I am and who I am? I've been listening to you for years, and where has it gotten me? We had a good life together. Oh, really? Is that why you're so anxious to check out and leave me all alone? You know it's not like that. Yes, it is, Douglas. You've made me turn to you for everything. What to wear, what part of my life I can talk about. Christina, when, when I first met you, it took you two hours to pick out a pair of shoes. So what? At least it was my decision. You were grateful for my help. You enjoyed the, the, the order I gave to your life. Oh, what am I ever going to do when you're gone? No manage. Do you really think so? You didn't even trust me alone with Cass for one morning. I'm telling you there are certain things that are off limits, and Cass is one of them. You know Why? that. Why? Why do I have to bury every emotion I have that you might think is inappropriate? Because some of your feelings are dangerous to you. And to others. Douglas, my heart is breaking. That's what you said. When I first met you. Who is it breaking for now? Well, certainly not Mary Frances. If you only knew how you sound just now. Oh, really? How do I sound, Douglas? What are you going to do? Pack me up and send me back to the hospital? Is that it? Are you... Christine. Is that your plan? You're going to lock me up? Is that how you're going to keep me away from Cass? I would, I would never do that. Oh, no, you won't. No, you won't. Because I'm through following orders, Douglas. From now on, I'm giving them. Christy, where are you going? Don't go, Christy. We've got to stay and talk about this, Christy. I'm so glad 
glad you're here. What is it? Baby, you're shaking. Christy and I had this major blow up. Oh, man, is it the wedding again? At this rate, we're lucky if we have <laughs> hit Valentine's Day in one piece. Oh, it's not the wedding, Cass. Uh, Christy came home and overheard Douglas and me talking about her. Well, it hurts her very much to watch you reach out to him in a way that she can't, you know? She's, she thinks that he's given up. But maybe I should keep my distance. I... That might be best. But I feel like Douglas needs me, Cass. Maybe that's what's making her jealous. People are going to stay crazy. There are things going on between them that we just don't know much about. Like what? You obviously know something I don't. Christy thinks that Douglas's illness is causing him to lose his mind. That's ridiculous. I have never seen any such... What, what is it? I don't know. I'm not sure. Frankie? I can't move to catch my, my breath. Frankie! Oh, I can't... It's Douglas! Another world fans, can Douglas survive the emotional stress brought on by Christina? And will Grant and Vicky finally have the night of passion they waited so long for? Don't wait till next week to find out what's happening on Another World. Call NBC Soap Phone right now. Dial 1-900-680-4NBC. Each call costs $1 per minute.